Kazuma Yagami is a young man who belongs to the Kanagi family who can control fire. However, Kazuma was kicked out of the family, all because he's a piece of trash who cannot use fire powers. After training for four years in China, Kazuma finally comes back to Japan, but this time, as the strongest wind mage in the world. After spending four years in China, Kazuma Yagami changed his name and returned to Japan to complete an exorcism job. At the client's mansion, he meets a member of the Kanagi family, who mocks Kazuma for being the family's trash but Kazuma just ignores him. The guy takes the lead to capture the evil spirit but fails. The client begs Kazuma for help offering him a bigger reward. So Kazuma moves forward and beats the evil spirit using his wind magic. Later, when the successor of the Kanagi family Ayano returns home, she gets to know that Kazuma has returned and has become a wind magic expert. Her father, Jugo feels sorry for him as Kazuma has to leave his family because of his lack of skill. Therefore, Ayano owns the family's traditional sword in Reiha and will be the next head of the family. However, Kazuma's father Genma Kanagi is still not willing to accept Kazuma since he can't use fire magic. In the middle of that night, three members of the branch family are killed by a wind user. The family doubts Kazuma for this act as they believe that he has returned to take revenge. Jugo sends two men from the Fuga clan Shingo and take it to bring Kazuma for interrogation. Ayano secretly joins them too. On the way, a wind spell seizes Ayano while Shingo and take it proceed to catch up to Kazuma. Kazuma doesn't consider himself part of the family house and politely refuses. However, another wind user kills Shingo and Takeya. When Ayano reaches there, she assumes Kazuma is the murderer, creating another grudge between him and his family. Genma thinks Kazuma is not that stupid to reveal his identity as the murderer, and thinks the culprit could be someone else. However, Jugo still finds Kazuma suspicious and wants Genma to interrogate him. Kazuma just yearns for his father's recognition. He was banished from the family four years ago, but Genma's attitude hasn't changed at all. He believes Kazuma learned wind magic to take revenge and asks him to surrender. However, Kazuma only wants to prove himself. He refuses to go back to the family house. Genma uses the rare divine flame but Kazuma counters with his own spell and wins against his father. He may seem happy but deep inside he still feels empty. His father still doesn't want to recognize him. Kazuma calls an ambulance for Genma, then returns to the hotel where he finds his younger brother Ren. He asks if Kazuma has made a contract with the Wind Spirit, as the Kanagi family head did with the Fire Spirit. Kazuma dodges the question and tells Ren that he has not forgiven the Kanagi family. Even though he has changed his surname, he doesn't intend on taking revenge. The Kanagi family will lose its status anyway, as the heir Ayano is too weak to lead the family. Yen texts Ayano about his meeting with Kazuma, making her head to the hotel. In the middle of the night, a Wind user attacks the hotel. Kazuma takes his little brother and jumps out of the hotel. He tells Ren to hide while he fights the suspect. However, there are two intruders and one of them abducts Ren. Ayano believes that Kazuma did the damage while Kazuma was rushing to save Ren from the wind users. The police also suspect Kazuma for the hotel incident as they are unaware of other wind users. Kazuma finally decides to meet Jugo so they can get Ren back. Kazuma recognizes the person he saw last night. It's Hayao's son. Ryuga. Jugo reveals Fuga clan is a bunch of rebels. This clan was initially an underground organization possessing immense power. The Kanagi family sealed the clan's power source after defeating them. Now they have abducted Ren to sacrifice him to their god Yama and break the seal. Ryuga absorbed the residual energy around the seal giving him power. Therefore, Haya wants to break the seal to get the maximum energy out of it. He has reached the seal location with Ren to perform the forbidden ritual to break the seal. Only a Kanagi member can break the seal without getting burned. Haya wants to use Ren and let Yama dwell inside Ryuya's body. However, the spirit will kill Ren as revenge for what the Kanagi family did. Ayano gets angry at the Fuga clan, but Kazuma tells her that it's the Kanagi family's fault in the first place. They were the ones who treated the Fuga clan like slaves for 300 years. Kanagi family only cares about power, and Jugo agrees to this. Kazuma agrees to help in defeating Ryuya in exchange for money. He looks at it as a job and says that he doesn't belong to the Kanagi family anymore. He may be showing off that he doesn't care, but inside his heart, he wants to save Ren at any cost. On his way with Ayano, they meet Ryuya who is there to stop them from disturbing the ritual. Kazuma leaves Ayano behind to deal with Ryuya and proceeds further by himself. The seal has broken already, but Kazuma manages to save Ren at the last moment. After defeating Ayano, Ryuya has reached near the seal letting Yama possess his body. As soon as the spirit has taken its full form, Hayao asks it to start the revenge by killing Ren and Kazuma. 
However, Yama doesn't listen to anyone and rushes to kill the one who sealed him. Kazuma CPRs Ayano with a healing elixir and chases Yama. While chasing, Kazuma drops Ren to defeat the evil spirits and goes after Yama. Kazuma combines his power and techniques with Ayano, but the attacks have no effect on Yama. Kazuma asks Ayano to buy some time until he gathers enough energy. At first, Ayano couldn't cause a mere scratch to the huge beast. She then remembers all the things Kazuma said about not giving up and fighting till the end. She gets up with greater determination and causes severe injuries to Yama. Kazuma's eyes change color and he uses the wind magic to freeze Yama in one place. As soon as Ayano gets the signal from Kazuma, she pierces Yama with her sword. The next day, Jugo invites Kazuma to the celebration for defeating Yama. There he meets Teika's sister Misao Ugami. She attacks Kazuma when he tells her that he attacked Teika before. However, Kazuma defends himself easily and Misao is grounded by Jugo. Kazuma mocks Teika for getting killed because of his weakness and leaves the celebration. The next day, Ayano runs into Kazuma while he is outside a hotel with a girl. Ayano denies her feelings towards Kazuma, but she and Ren follow him around the whole town. They find Kazuma meeting up with Misao and then they walk together towards a hotel. But it's a trap set up by Misao to kill Kazuma by hiring snipers. Kazuma survives all those pity attacks, telling Misao that she has changed a lot since they met years ago. Misao believes Kazuma is responsible for her brother's death. Kazuma requests Ayano not to punish Misao as she can't harm Kazuma anyway. Suddenly, a mysterious person approaches Misao offering her power to get her revenge. Misao has joined hands with the evil guy she met. She started killing innocent citizens to get enough power to defeat Kazuma. In just a few days Misao has killed dozens of people, as Kanagi family has lost tracking ability after the rebellion of Fuga clan. Jugo asks Ayano to take help from Kazuma to investigate this case, using Ayano as bait. Kazuma succeeds in tracking the source of the evil energy reaching Misao's location. Ayano finds them as well and proceeds to attack Misao but she disappears, saying that she will return after gathering enough energy to face Kazuma. The evil guy helps Misao absorb the energy from the soul she gathered. He convinces her that she's doing nothing wrong as her intention is right. Jugo has given responsibility for killing Misao to the Ugami family. The task is taken away from Kazuma but he wants to continue anyway. Ayano wants to stop Kazuma as he won't let them deal with Misao. Moreover she suspects that Kazuma is in love with Misao. The Kanagi family is taking help from Kirika Takabana, the same girl whom Ayano saw with Kazuma. She's a police inspector who helps the Ugami family track Misao hiding in a church. The Ugami family has reached there to defeat her. When Kazuma and Ayano reach the church, Misao has already killed her own family but is still unable to defeat Kazuma. The guy who is guiding her finally appears. He was just using Misao to gather souls which he will use to increase his own strength. When Misao realizes her sins, she falls unconscious. The guy introduces himself as Michael Hurley from the Stars of Sagacity. He's a disciple of Kazuma's old enemy who has come to kill him. Michael turns Misao into a supreme dragon using the energy from the souls he collected. Kazuma tells Ayano that he he is determined to protect everyone, so he can't let Misao get killed in this battle. He combines his wind power with Ayano's spirit sword. It creates a divine flame that destroys the dragon without hurting Misao. Michael gets scared of Kazuma's immense power and escapes. When Misao wakes up she asks to be killed, but Kazuma believes that she should repent for her sins. She then decides to live the rest of her life in the church praying for forgiveness. Misao asks why Kazuma spared her life. He reveals that she protected him when he was bullied in his childhood. Some nights later, an evil Hidadama haunts the academy where Ayano studies. Jugo tells Ayano to get rid of the spirit. Moreover, he has hired Kazuma as Ayano's bodyguard. Jugo's intention is to make Ayano and Kazuma get along with each other. When they reach the academy, Ayano's friends Nanis and Yukari join as they want to see the Hidadama. After roaming the school for a while, Kazuma finally detects a spirit and they follow it. The evil spirit they are after turns out to be a mischievous pixie named Chiana. She's not very harmful and only likes to tease humans. Chiana and a few other pixies have come to grant the last wish of the dying cherry tree. After the beautiful blossom, the pixies leave. Kazuma knew the pixies weren't harmful and just wanted to prank someone. He just liked to watch Ayano get teased and pissed off. At school, Ren is being pursued by a girl from his class named Kanon Suzuhara. After spending the whole day with her, Ren returns home when he hears a girl singing a song in the playground. She invites Ren to play with her and he gladly agrees. Meanwhile, Kazuma is having dinner with Ayano when he gets called by Tiana making him leave in a hurry. Tiana asks Kazuma to help them in recovering the pixie's stolen treasure. Meanwhile the girl Ren met is Ayumi. 
who belongs to the renowned Suobuki family. A few guards come over to take her back but due to their brutal behavior, Ren decides to save Ayumi from them. The Tsubuki family tells Jugo that Ren has stolen their treasure. Jugo orders to look for Ren and asks Ayano to stay alert. Coincidentally, the one who has stolen Pixie's treasure is also from the Tsubuki family. This family consists of individuals in a contract with the Earth Spirit. They are known to be heartless people making Kazuma excited to fight them. The Tsubuki family is also responsible for looking after Fuji Mountain. The Fuji Mountain erupted for the first time about 300 years ago. Its energy is concentrated to form a behemoth that can bring calamity to the whole world. The head of the family at that time prayed to the Earth Spirit for help. In result, it sealed the monster inside the mountain, making her life in this attempt. The seal only lasts for 30 years, making the Tsubuki family sacrifice a member to renew the seal. Ayumi was the chosen one, so she wants to make some beautiful memories with Ren before dying. Mayumi and her attendant Yuji come to take Ayumi back. Ren tries his best to save her but she simply surrenders. She is one of Mayumi's clones, created to be sacrificed in place of Mayumi. Even if she's not sacrificed, she will die in a month anyway. After Mayumi and Ayumi return to the Tsuobuki Palace, Kiraha changes her plan and involves Mayumi in the ritual too. Ayumi is running short of enough power to complete the ritual, so Mayumi must aid her. If the ritual is interrupted then Mayumi might die with Ayumi. Therefore, Kiraha orders Yuji to deal with Kazuma as he will definitely come to stop the ritual. Kiraha has actually turned her father into a statue when he tried to stop her from her evil intentions. Since then she got the control of the Tsuobuki's family. Moreover she's performing the ritual for her own benefit. Jugo warns Ayano to stay away from the ritual, but she still helps Ren to meet Ayumi for the last time. However they get blocked at the mansion door by Yuji who has transformed into a stone monster. Ren uses his purifying flame to turn Yuji back into his human form. He believes that instead of this sacrificing ritual, they should defeat the behemoth and end this inhumanity all at once. Kazuma is ready to help his little brother in this matter, convincing Ayumi in the process. Kazuma rescues Ren, Ayumi and Mayumi from the cave. He also finds the real head of the Tsubuki family whose last words are a request to stop Kiraha by all means. Just like Kazuma, Kiraha was also born without the ability to use her family's earth magic. This misfortune made her crave crazily for power. Therefore she wants to perform the ritual to dwell the power of the behemoth in herself. However, Kiraha was unaware of the fact that she had been used by the behemoth. The behemoth was gradually transferring its power to Kiraha to revive itself. The behemoth is also the one responsible for Kiraha's lack of ability to use earth power. As Kazuma has accidentally caused damage in the cave, it resulted in the instant breakage of the seal. The behemoth Zenon escapes. All attacks on Zenon seem ineffective as the monster has concentrated its power to create a barrier around itself. Ayumi witnesses everything and doesn't want to stand back anymore. She starts to perform a sealing ritual. Kazuma tells his brother that Ayumi is putting in her efforts because she wants to live with Ren. Therefore, Ren should put in his best efforts as well. The ritual suppresses Zenon's power enabling Kazuma to defeat it with the Ayano and Ren's help. The pixie's treasure egg was used to age Ayumi faster. Therefore, she has a small lifespan. Moreover, the ritual has also sucked out Ayumi's power decreasing her lifespan from one month to a few minutes. Ayumi ends up dying in Ren's arms without any regrets, because she saved many other lives and got to spend time with Ren. Kazuma witnesses this all with a heavy heart and wishes to grow stronger to stop such incidents in the future.